Hello, my name is Lana Chan, and I'm a Product Marketing Manager here at Cadence Design System for its PCI Express Verification IP. This Whiteboard Wednesday session is the second in a two-part series covering the evolution of PCI Express and what it holds in the future. In my previous session, I covered the factors that drove the advancement of PCI Express for the last two decades to become the de facto interconnect technology. In today's session, I'll be covering the drivers for PCI Express Gen 4 and the challenges that we're seeing from a designer's perspective as well as a verification perspective. So just to quickly recap, for over the years, over the last uh, two decades, what we've seen with each generation of PCI Express is a doubling of data rate approximately every four years while maintaining backward software compatibility in a low cost, low power uh, package. Currently, right now, what we're seeing is the big drivers are big data for PCI Express Gen 4. Mobility and IoT is driving the need for faster and more efficient data management. A second driver is our networks infrastructure. PCI Express Gen 3 simply cannot keep up with the latest spec of Ethernet without increasing the number of lanes that's required. Increased lanes means increased cost in terms of power, means increased cost in terms of uh, chip real estate, and also your data center. These all violate some of the key advantages of PCI Express, which is to have a low power, low package solution. And then finally, the storage market. We are creating vast amounts of uh, data that folks want to store for their own personal reasons. And also, this data, there are companies out there that actually want to analyze it, make better decisions for it, and to target um, better solutions towards you and I. With this in mind, what has the SIG been doing in order to address it? Gen 4 is based off of the Gen 3 specification, various ECNs that address these needs, while maintaining the 128-130-bit encoding, and doubling the bandwidth to 16 giga transfers per second. As we spoke about in our last session, we already saw challenges meeting 10 giga transfers 10 giga transfers per second for Gen 3. That was not possible, and that's why we switched over to 128, 130-bit transfer. So I'll now cover the ECNs that are part of the spec. There have been numerous ECNs that have been incorporated within the latest Gen 4 specification. The first one is Pass ID that I'd like to talk about. Pass ID enables an endpoint to be accessed by multiple processes. This is especially important for distributed systems and for big data applications in which you're chunking off data off and trying to perform computations on it. Second item is downstream port control. Downstream port control entails that if there's an incorrectable error on your downstream ports, that it's discarded and that you can take care of it. That means that your data integrity is ensured um, and you're not spreading um, the error throughout your uh, system. The third one is L1 substate. L1 substate lowers your power consumption when your link is idle, and this is especially important for embedded, handheld, as well as tablet applications. With that, um, in my next session, I'll be covering the major protocol enhancements for Gen 4 um, and what the verification challenges and design challenges are for these items. Thank you, and I'll talk to you next week.